Hi friends, welcome. I am Dr. Satish Belamkar with a learning episode on the introduction of acid based titration part 3. The content writer is Professor Asmita Gajbiye. Take a look on what we are going to study today. Module 1 Background. Module 2 Concept of acid base. Module 3 Law of mass action, common ion effect and pH. Module 4, Relative Strengths of Acids and Base and Ionization. Module 5, Role of Solvents in Acid-Base Titration. Module 1, Background. Titration, also known as titrimetry, is a common laboratory method of quantitative chemical analysis that is used to determine the unknown concentration of an identified analyte. Since volume measurements play a key role in titration, it is also known as volumetric analysis. In aqueous or non-aqueous media, acid-based titrations are the most frequently performed titrations in analytical laboratories in all the fields. An acid-based titration is the determination of the concentration of an acid or base by exactly neutralizing the acid or base with an acid or base of known concentration. This allows for quantitative analysis of the concentration of an unknown acid or base solution. It makes use of the neutralization reaction that occurs between acids and bases. Acid based titrations can also be used to find percent purity of chemicals. Module 2 Concept of Acid Base acid base definitions. Arrhenius theory, the first modern definition of acids and bases was devised by S. Arrhenius, a hydrogen theory of acids. It followed from his 1884 work with Friedrich Wilhelm Ostwald in establishing the presence of ions in aqueous solution and led to Arrhenius receiving the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1903. As defined by Arrhenius, an Arrhenius acid is a substance that dissociates in water to form hydrogen ions. That is, an acid increases the concentration of H plus ions in an aqueous solution. An Arrhenius base is a substance that dissociates in water to form hydroxide ions. That is, a base increases the concentration of OH minus ions in an aqueous solution. The reaction of an acid with a base is called a neutralization reaction. The products of this reaction are a salt and water. Acid plus base gives rise to salt plus water. In this traditional representation, an acid base neutralization reaction is formulated as a double replacement reaction. For example, the reaction of hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide solutions produces a solution of sodium chloride and some additional water molecules. HCl aqueous plus sodium hydroxide aqueous gives rise to NaCl aqueous plus H2O. The modifier in this equation is important. It was implied by Arrhenius, not included explicitly. It indicates that the substances are dissolved in water. In fact, though all three substances HCl, NaOH and NaCl are capable of existing as pure compounds, in aqueous solutions they are fully dissociated into the aquated ions that is H plus, Cl minus, Na plus and OH minus. Limitation The Arrhenius 
definitions of acidity and alkalinity are restricted to aqueous solutions and refer to the concentration of the solvent ions. Under this definition, pure H2SO4 and HCl dissolved in toluene are not acidic and molten NaOH and solutions of calcium amide in liquid ammonia are not alkaline. Bronsted Lowry definition. The Bronsted Lowry definition formulated in 1923 independently by Johannes Nicholas Bronsted in Denmark and Martin Lowry in England is based upon the idea of protonation of bases through the deprotonation of acids. An acid base reaction is thus the removal of a hydrogen ion from the acid and its addition to the base. The removal of a hydrogen ion from an acid produces its conjugate base which is the acid with a hydrogen ion removed. The reception of a proton by a base produces its conjugate acid which is the base with a hydrogen ion added. Unlike the Arrhenius theory, the bronsted lowry definition does not refer to the formation of salt and solvent but instead to the formation of conjugate acids and conjugate bases produced by the transfer of a proton from the acid to the base. In this approach, acids and bases are fundamentally different in behavior from salts which are seen as electrolytes subject to the theories of Debye, Onsager and others. An acid and a base react not to produce a salt and a solvent but to form a new acid and a new base. The concept of neutralization is thus absent. Bronsted lowry acid base behavior is formally independent of any solvent making it more all encompassing than the Arrhenius model. The general formula for acid base reactions according to the Bronsted lowry definition is HA plus B gives rise to BH plus plus A minus where HA represents the acid, B represents the base, BH plus represents the conjugate acid of B and A minus represents the conjugate base of HA. For example, a bronsted lowry model for the dissociation of hydrochloric acid in aqueous solution would be HCl plus H2O gives rise to H3O plus plus Cl minus. The removal of H plus from the HCl produces the chloride ion, the conjugate base of the acid. The addition of H plus to the H2O acting as a base forms the hydronium ion H3O plus the conjugate acid of the base. Water is amphoteric that is it can act as both an acid and a base. The bronsted lowry model explains this showing the dissociation of water into low concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide ions H2O plus H2O is in equilibrium with H3O plus plus OH minus. Limitation. The bronsted lowry model calls hydrogen containing substances like HCl acids thus some substances which many chemists consider to be basids such as SO3 or BCl3 are excluded from this classification due to lack of hydrogen. Gilbert N. Lewis wrote in 1938 to restrict the group of acids to those substances that contain hydrogen interference as seriously with the systematic understanding of chemistry as would the restriction of the term oxidizing agent to substances containing oxygen. Furthermore, KOH and KNH2 are not considered bronsted bases but rather salts containing the bases OH- and NH2. Lewis definition. The hydrogen requirement of Arrhenius and bronsted lowry was removed by the Lewis definition of acid base reactions devised by Gilbert and Lewis in 1923. In the same year as bronsted lowry but it was not elaborated by him until 1938. Instead of defining acid base reactions in terms of protons or other bonded substances, the Lewis definition defines a base 
referred to as a Lewis base to be a compound that can donate an electron pair and an acid, a Lewis acid to be a compound that can receive this electron pair. For example, boron trifluoride BF3 is a typical Lewis acid. It can accept a pair of electrons as it has a vacancy in its octet. The fluoride ion has a full octet and can donate a pair of electrons. Thus, BF3 plus F minus gives rise to BF4 minus is a typical Lewis acid, Lewis base reaction. All compounds of group 13 elements with a formula AX3 can behave as Lewis acids. Similarly, compounds of group 15 elements with a formula DY3 such as amines, NR3 and phosphines, PR3 can behave as Lewis bases. Adducts between them have the formula X3A dy3 with additive covalent bond shown symbolically as between the atoms a that is acceptor and the d donor the lewis and bronsted lowry definitions are consistent with each other since the reaction h plus plus oh minus gives rise to h2o is an acid base reaction in both theories module 3 law of mass action common ion effect and ph law of mass action. This law was formulated over the period 1864 to 79 by the Norwegian scientists Kato M. Guldberg and Peter Wage. It states that the rate of a chemical reaction is proportional to the product of the masses of the reactants. Necessarily, this implies that for a chemical reaction, mixture that is an equilibrium the ratio between the concentration of reactants and products is constant. A capital A plus B capital B gives rise to C capital C plus D capital D, where A, B, C, D are the coefficients for a balanced chemical equation. K is equal to C small c capital D small d divided by A small a capital B small b. For example, NH3 plus HOA C gives rise to NH4 plus plus OAC minus NH4 plus OAC minus divided by NH3 HOA C is equal to K that is unitless constant. Application of law of mass action. The effect of adding an excess of one of the products of dissociation either at constant volume or at constant pressure on the degree of dissociation of a gas may be calculated by the law of mass action. In heterogeneous reactions, the law of mass action applies to the gaseous or dissolved components. The concentrations of pure liquids or solids in the gas phase or solution are constant and may be included in the equilibrium constant that is K. The law of mass action applies to the ionization of weak electrolytes as towards dilution law but not to strong electrolytes when the concentrations must be replaced by the activities. The effect of addition of a common ion on the solubility of a salt, solubility product and the results of hydrolysis may be considered from the point of view of the law of mass action. Indicators are weakly acidic or weak are basic substances with anions or cations of different color from the unionized molecules. This law was useful for obtaining the correct equilibrium equation for a reaction, but the rate expressions it provides are now known to apply only to elementary reactions. Common ion effect. The common ion effect is responsible for the reduction in the solubility of an ionic precipitate when a soluble compound containing one of the ions of the precipitate is added to the solution in equilibrium with the precipitate. It states that if the concentration of any one of the ions is increased, then according to Lee Chatelier principle, some of the ions in excess should be removed from solution by combining with the oppositely charged ions. The common ion effect is 
separation of the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte containing a common ion. Exceptions. Many transition metal compounds violate this rule due to the formation of complex ions, a scenario that part of the equilibria involved in simple precipitation of salt from ionic solution. For example, copper 1, chloride is insoluble in water, but it dissolves when chloride ions are added, such as when hydrochloric acid is added. This is due to the formation of soluble CuCl2 complex ions, common ion effect on weak acids and bases. The common ion effect suppresses the ionization of a weak acid by adding more of an ion that is a product of this equilibrium. Example, the common ion effect of H3O plus on the ionization of acetic acid. The common ion effect suppresses the ionization of a weak base by adding more of an ion that is a product of this equilibrium. Henderson Hasselbach equation. The Henderson Hasselbach equation describes the deviations of pH as a measure of acidity using pKa, the negative log of the acid dissociation constant. In biological and chemical systems, the equation is also useful for estimating the pH of a buffer solution and finding the equilibrium pH in acid base reactions. It is widely used to calculate the isoelectric point of proteins. Here is the dissociation equation for HA. HA gives rise to H plus plus A minus from which we write the Ka expression. Ka is equal to H plus A minus by HA. Next we isolate the H plus and put it on the left hand side of the equation. Thus H plus is equal to Ka multiplied by HA by A minus. Limitations of Henderson Hasselbach equation. This neglects the dissociation of the acid and binding of H plus to the base. The dissociation of water and relative water concentration itself is neglected as well. These approximations will fail when dealing with relatively strong acids or bases. pKa more than a couple units away from 7. Dilute or very concentrated solutions less than 1 mm are greater than 1 molar are heavily skewed acid base ratios more than 100 to 1. In high buffer dilutions where the concentration of protons arising from water becomes equally or more prevalent than the buffer species themselves. At pH 7 this means buffer component concentrations of less than 10 to 5 moles formally but practically much higher. The pKa of the buffer system will tend towards neutrality. Module 4 Relative Strengths of Acids and Base and Ionization Ionization Consider the dissociation of a weak electrolyte such as acetic acid in dilute aqueous solution. CH3COOH plus H2O gives rise to H3O plus plus CH3COO minus. This will be written for simplicity in the conventional manner. CH3COOH gives rise to H plus plus CH3COO minus, where H plus represents the hydrated hydrogen ion. Applying the law of mass action, we have K is equal to H plus plus CH3COO minus by CH3COOH. K is the equilibrium constant at a particular temperature and is usually known as the ionization constant or dissociation constant. If one mole of the electrolyte is dissolved in V liters of solution, V is equal to 1 by C, where E is the concentration in moles per liter and if alpha is the degree of ionization at equilibrium, then the amount of unionized electrolyte will be 1 minus alpha moles and the amount of each of the ions will be a moles. The concentration of unionized acetic acid will therefore be 1 minus alpha by V and the concentration of each of the ions alpha by V. Substituting in the equilibrium equation, we obtain the expression 
alpha square by 1 minus alpha multiplied by v is equal to k or alpha square c by 1 minus alpha is equal to k. This is known as Hertzsch-Wolff's dilution law. Relative strengths of acids and base. The relative strengths of acids and may be determined by measuring their equilibrium constants in aqueous solutions. In solutions of the same concentration, stronger acids ionize to a greater extent and so yield higher concentrations of hydronium ions than do weaker acids. The equilibrium constant for an acid is called the acid ionization constant that is Ka. The relative strengths of acids is often described in terms of an acid dissociation equilibrium constant Ka. To understand the nature of this equilibrium constant, let us assume that the reaction between an acid and water can be represented by the following generic equation HA aqueous plus H2O gives rise to H3O plus aqueous plus A minus aqueous. In other words, some of the HA molecules react to form H3O plus and A minus ions. By convention, the concentrations of these ions in units of moles per liter are represented by the symbols H3O plus and A minus. The concentration of the HA molecules that remain in solution is represented by the symbol HA. The value of Ka for acid is calculated from the following equation. Ka is equal to H3O plus A minus divided by HA. When a strong acid dissolves in water, the acid reacts extensively with water to form H3O plus and A minus ions. Only a small residual concentration of the HA molecules remains in solution. The product of the concentrations of the H3O plus and A minus ions is therefore much larger than the concentration of the HA molecules. So, Ka for a strong acid is greater than 1. Example, hydrochloric acid as a Ka of roughly 1 multiplied by 106. H3O plus Cl minus divided by HCl is equal to 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. Weak acids on the other hand react only slightly with water. The product of the concentrations of the H3O plus and A minus ions is therefore smaller than the concentration of the residual HA molecules. As a result, Ka for a weak acid is less than 1. Ka can therefore be used to distinguish between strong acids and weak acids. Strong acids Ka is more than 1 weak acids Ka is less than 1. The relative strengths of conjugate acid base pairs. Strong acids have a weak conjugate base. Example, HCl is a strong acid. If HCl is a strong acid, it must be a good proton donor. HCl can only be a good proton donor. However, if the Cl minus ion is a poor proton acceptor, thus the Cl minus ion must be a weak base. HCl plus H2O gives rise to H3O plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous, where HCl is strong acid and Cl minus is a weak base. Strong bases have a weak conjugate acid. Example, let us consider the relationship between the strength of the ammonium and its conjugate base ammonia. The NH4 plus ion is a weak acid because ammonia is a reasonably good base. NH4 plus plus H2O gives rise to H3O plus NH3, where NH4 plus is a weak acid and NH3 is a good base. The magnitude of Ka can also be used to explain why some compounds that qualify as bronsted acids or base do not act like acids or bases when they dissolve in water. When the value of Ka for an acid is relatively large, the acid reacts with water until essentially all of the acid molecules have been consumed. Sulfuric acid Ka is equal to 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3. For example, reacts with water until 99.9% .9 of the H2SO4 molecules in a 1 molar solution have lost a proton to form H2SO4 minus. 
H2SO4 plus H2O gives rise to H3O plus HSO4 minus. As Ka becomes smaller, the extent to which the acid reacts with water decreases. As long as Ka for the acid is significantly larger than the value of Ka for water, the acid will ionize to some extent. Some potential Bronsted acids are so weak that their Ka values are smaller than water. Ammonia, for example, has a Ka of only 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 33. Although NH3 can be a Bronsted acid because it has the potential to act as a hydrogen ion donor, there is no evidence of this acidity when it dissolves in water. The leveling effect of water. All strong acids and bases seem to have the same strength when dissolved in water, regardless of the value of Ka. This phenomenon is known as the leveling effect of water, the tendency of water to limit the strength of strong acids and bases. We can explain this by noting that strong acids react extensively with water to form the H3O plus ion. More than 99% of the HCl molecules in hydrochloric acid react with water to form H3O plus and Cl minus ions. For example, HCl plus H2O gives rise to H3O plus Cl minus and more than 99% of the H2SO4 molecules in a 1 molar solution react with water to form H3O ions and HSO4 minus ions. H2SO4 plus H2O gives rise to H3O plus plus HSO4 minus. Thus, the strength of strong acids is limited by the strength of the acid H3O plus formed when water molecules pick up an H plus ion. A similar phenomenon occurs in solutions of strong bases. Strong bases react quantitatively with water to form the OH minus ions. Once this happens, the solution cannot become any more basic. The strength of strong bases is limited by the strength of the base. OH minus form when water molecules lose an H plus ion. Relative strength of acids and bases. Relative acid or base strength can be predicted by the following rules. Electronegativity. Hydrogens attached to more electronegative atoms are more acidic than hydrogens attached to less electronegative atoms. OH more than NH. Size. Hydrogens attached to larger atoms will be more acidic than hydrogens attached to smaller atoms, thus SH more than OH. Hybridization Hydrogens attached to an atom with a hybridization having more S character will be more acidic than hydrogens attached to the same atom with a hybridization is having less S character, thus SP greater than SP square greater than SP cube. Induction Acids with electron withdrawing groups nearby will be more acidic than hydrogens without electron withdrawing groups nearby. The effect will be stronger if there is more than one group. The group is closer to the acidic H or if the group has a more electronegative atom. Resonance Acids whose conjugate base is stabilized by resonance will be more acidic than acids whose conjugate base is not stabilized by resonance. Aromaticity. Acids whose conjugate base is aromatic will be more acidic than similar acids whose conjugate base is not aromatic. Base strength can be considered by looking at the converse of the rules given. A base is stronger if the atom is less electronegative. A base is stronger if the atom is smaller. A base is stronger if the atom has less S character that is SP cube greater than SP square greater than SP. A base is stronger if it does not have electronegative groups nearby. A base is stronger if it is not stabilized by resonance. A base is stronger if its electrons are not involved in aromaticity. Module 5. Role of solvents in acid base titration. In most cases, titration in water is quite adequate to determine the acid or base concentration. Generally, for the titration of acids, a strong base like sodium or potassium hydroxide is used. For the titration of bases, a very strong acid like hydrochloric acid is used. 
the hydrochloric acid can be replaced by nitric acid or sulfuric acid if the sample contains substances reacting with chloride such as silver ions titration is an absolute method so requires no calibration on top of that multi parameter determinations are possible with one acid as a titrant several bases can be determined titration is a quite versatile technique where it concerns the concentration range that can be analyzed variations in sample size between 0.1 and 100 ml in concentrations of the titrant between 0.01 m and 1 m and that of the burette size between 2 ml and 50 ml can be made an acid dissolved in water gives the next reaction ha plus h2o gives rise to h3o plus plus a minus depending on the strength of an acid the equilibrium lies to the right or to the left a very strong acid like hydrochloric acid completely dissociates in water a weak acid like acetic acid only partly dissociates and most of the acetic acid is present in the form of the non dissociated acid for the classification of the acid strength the dissociation constant ka is used ka is equal to h3o plus plus a minus divided by ha conclusion Acids and bases play an important role in many processes and are controlled at a regularly basis. In most cases, titration in water is quite adequate to determine the acid or base concentration. Generally, for the titration of acids, a strong base is sodium or potassium hydroxide is used. For the titration of bases, a very strong acid like hydrochloric acid is used. The hydrochloric acid can be replaced by nitric acid or sulfuric acid if the sample contains substances reacting with chloride such as silver ions titration is an absolute method so requires no calibration on top of that multi parameter determinations are possible with one acid as a titrant several bases can be determined titration is a quite versatile technique where it concerns the concentration range that can be analyzed variations in sample size between 0.1 and 100 ml in concentration of the titrant between 0.01 m and 1 m and that of the burette size between 2 ml and 50 ml can be made so dear students don't forget to review all of them in your self study if you have missed any of the module or content you may log on to our website www.cc.nic.in to download videos faqs lor and other contents so that you can stay updated with this chapter keep studying